In this video, Dr. Keith Nichols, MD, will answer the question we get on a daily basis concerning testosterone replacement therapy dosage. What exact number for dose and level do we need? Dr. Keith Nichols and myself already made a video about that question. He explained why we need higher dosages than ever before and this is because of the EDCs in our environment. I also made, together with Dr. Keith Nichols, a video about that with Dr. Anthony J, the oestrogen man. Check out the video in this card to check that video out. But once again, in the comment section, we got this question over and over again. What exact number for dose and levels do we need? Please like and subscribe. Thank you. And hit that notification bell so you won't miss anything. Everyone's caught up in a number. Your physician, his physician's caught up in a number. We treat symptoms, we treat towards optimal. And so the numbers follow. I wish we didn't even have to obtain laboratory studies, but we, but we do. But if your doctor wanted a level less than 1,200, just measure it all at a different time. Uh, they don't tell you when to measure it, what well, time to measure it after you give it. They don't tell you when to measure it. Uh, but you can be super high if you want to measure it the day after your injection. You can be at your, uh, you know, lowest amount uh, days after your injection. But nonetheless, uh, when we talk about your doctor says 1,200, that's why I see men in my office because their doctor went to 900. They didn't feel any better. Their free testosterone really is not significantly elevated enough for them to to have a response to the testosterone and the only way i know to to improve their symptoms is, is to raise that uh, free testosterone level so but this is the problem that we run into on a daily day basis that 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 eddie brings out is that doctors treat for a number and if you're not better well oops well that's you know there's danger after that which i don't know of any studies that show any danger after that um so and, and, I, and I provided a study last week, whatever, uh, with Dr. J that showed men that even that they treated for a period of time, they got into the 1600 range and the over the 3000 range. And the only way there was no major adverse cardiac events in any of those, even in the men that had levels over 3000. Uh, so, you know, the only thing that they really noticed was an erythrocytosis, as Scott reported, and some edema. Those were the major adverse effects of even being at over 3,000. Now, I don't have anybody over 3,000. I'm just saying in that study, uh, they, you know, but if you look at what happened to the men that were at 1,600, they had a much more significant decrease in visceral body fat, increase in lean muscle mass, you know. So, you know, I, uh, you know if you're treating towards symptoms, you're not, you're not treating a number. You have to start with a dose. And then you adjust that dose up and down based on symptoms. Uh, yes, you look at levels. I, I do tell men if their free testosterone comes back really elevated, I mean, they're not getting any more benefit than being in a, you know, in a, in a more appropriate range. I, I'm trying to be very careful with my words here. So the average dose, typically the average dose is two clicks twice a day. That tends to be the average. Okay. Uh, Friday, every man that was on that had to come down to two clicks in the morning and one click in the evening. I mean, cause they needed to lower their dosage. They were just, that just, they were, you know, they're, they're great and they're symptoms, but they're kind of wasting a product. You want to save money too. I mean, uh, let's, uh, may, let's make up a number. A free testosterone of 75 is not going to get you any more benefit than a free testosterone of, of let's just say 50. So, uh, so, you know, yes, we, we can come down and follow their symptoms still. And that way they're not spending as much money. It's just working great in them. These tend to be the younger men. Uh, when I say younger, I, I'm, since I'm so old now, I'm talking about young 40s and, you know, mid 30s. Uh, but they, they have, you know, a lot of receptors. They're very sensitive. And so they do well. And some would, de would definitely one click twice a day. But the average dose, two clicks twice a day. Some, like us old guys, may need three clicks twice a day. I don't think I have anybody that I know of in years that's over three clicks twice a day. Uh, most are two clicks twice a day or a variation of, of two, three and two, two and two, one and two, you know. Uh, so this, it, but yes, the, the cream can work wonders and miracles. It's just all going to depend on, on, on several factors, you know. And, uh, Picking up on what you just said, Keith, uh, 
could one get a kind of uh, symptoms if the free uh, testosterone goes up even further and further? If one would uh, now really exaggerate, money has no issue. So uh, five clicks twice a day, would one get uh, any uh, symptoms of high testosterone? No. Well, I mean, see, now then we start crossing the line, and I have to explain to my patients between medical TRT and testosterone abuse. And I'm not going to cross that line. I mean, there just comes a, a point to where, you know, it's a, it, 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 we're not going to get any additional benefits. Now, when you put it in, I guess, Scott, you, you're very familiar with the anabolic steroid world. And I see the autopsies of these bodybuilders that die and their testosterone levels were in the tens of thousands. But uh, you're not going to get a benefit, I don't think, any more significant benefit. When I look at the paper that I'm referring to just last week, when, the, when they looked at the men that their testosterone levels were 3,300 and compared them to men that were 1,600, there was not a significant difference at all with the degree of improvement as far as, you know, decreasing visceral body fat, uh, you know, increasing lean muscle in those ranges. Well, one thing that I can add is that uh, in conditions of abuse, there are almost always side effects that occur. And... Uh, and what I'm talking about is the known side effects. Um, and then what Keith said at the lower end of the spectrum is completely reversed at the higher end of the spectrum. And what I mean by that is it follows the same logic, but as you continually keep abusing and uh, in, consuming more androgens and or by whatever uh, mode of administration, after you reach a certain point, there are more side effects than um, what you're actually getting for a performance enhancement and benefit. Uh, nitrogen retention in the, the muscles is maxed out. You can't uh, recycle any more proteins within the body. You've reached a physiological threshold. So going past it doesn't make common sense. It doesn't make practical sense at all. I'm so happy you said that, Scott, because I refer to it as a point of diminishing returns. Yeah, and, and, that's and exactly. That's, it's a that, point of diminishing returns. And so, so I want this to make sure that this, whatever you do, tweet <clears throat> Dr. Nichols said this, send it to anyone. I want to use the lowest dose of testosterone that will resolve your symptoms. That's you all. that. I want to use the lowest dose that will resolve your symptoms. That's clear. That's the essence of optimization. That is, that is medical TRT. Yeah. And that is great. Great answer. I hope this answers your question. And if you want to watch the very informative Complete TOT Doctor's Roundtable episode where that clip got extracted from, make sure to watch out the video right here.